Hello everybody, Amanda Davis here, and this is my first Teach Thursday scope. Um, and so in this scope, um, and actually in this series of Teach Thursdays, I'm going to be coming on on Thursday evenings to do a series of scopes about teaching. And just a lot of it's going to be things that I've learned, tips for new teachers, stuff like that. Um, so what I wanted to do though was I wanted to do the process from beginning to end base well not beginning to end because but the beginning from the beginning so the first thing if you're gonna be a teacher is you need to get your teaching license or be certified or whatever the case is so you have to start somewhere put it that way you can't just say oh I want to be a teacher one day and go and get a job the next day um, so I wanted to start from the beginning and just, I want to say that I'm not an expert. I'm just a teacher that has some experience and I just feel like I can share with some other people. And so I do hope you do find value in this scope and I don't want it to be a long one either. So I'm not going to keep you very long, but I just wanted to give some advice for people that are thinking about being a teacher. So the first thing that I want to say is really depends on, um, I'm going to say your country because I know on Periscope a lot of us are not all from the same place. I know in the United States it depends on your um, state for most of it because our education is, ba is basically state run. And so each state has a certain require or has a base of requirements for teaching at different levels. So what I'm going to say is the first thing that you want to do if you want to be a teacher is look into the requirements for wherever you live. So number one, look into requirements for wherever you live. Number two, think about the level that you want to teach. Are you talking, you know, toddler in the early childhood, preschools, that kind of thing? Or are you talking... Um, you know, K to 12, are you talking K to 6, are you talking middle school, um, and by middle school I mean like 6th grade to 8th grade-ish, or high school, 9th to 12th grade, and I'm saying that because that's what it is in this area, but so 6th to 8th grade is roughly um, beginning of the teen years, um, so like 12-ish to 15-ish, 14-ish, and then 9th to 12th would be like the 14-ish, 15-ish to 18, basically. Or do you want to go beyond that and do post-secondary um, and do uh, college education? Because really, that's when your next decision is going to be as far as choosing the education program for you. It's really based on what it is that you're looking to try to do. Because what I was going to say is for early childhood, and by that I mean anything from infants to like kids that are preschool age, so like three, four, five. Most places, including the state that I live in, really only require you to have a little bit of a basic background in education um, and child development, and so you can get like a two-year associate's degree at most community colleges for that. And um, like I said, it's going to depend on the country you're in and the state that you're in and that kind of thing, but um, as far as to teach in a licensed facility, most places are only going to look for you to have a minor background in early childhood. For elementary school, what I was going to say was you really want to start looking into programs and, and colleges and universities and where they rank and do your research. So that's what the little computer emoji was for in my title. You want to do your research on the college that you want to go to and the program and where that program might rank nationally as well as in your state, specifically in your state because you're most likely going to get a job in the state you're living in. Um, but like I know the college I ended up at ended up being one of the top schools in the nation. Um, it was in some different college magazines and stuff ranked as one of the top schools in the nation with the education program and um, with their teacher education program. And so that was good for that school to have that background. And then I know both schools that I attended, because I actually attended one university for a semester before I transferred. <laughs> um, but both schools I attended were well-known in my state as teacher education schools um, and good ones. And so just doing what you can to get um, the research done to make sure that you're not just going to some random place that you may not be able to get a job because some job places are going to look into where you got that education. Did you do it online? Not to say that online is not a good idea because it can be depending on your online school. Um, 
you know, did you do it in person? Did you do practicum experiences? All that kind of stuff is going to come into play. Because the other thing is, I know that, um, like, especially with elementary school, middle school, and high school, your education experience while you were still in college really comes into play when it comes time to get that job because um, they're going to look at your experience and how much you have limited or more. Maybe you did some substituting. Maybe you did um, something like taught early childhood while you were going to school for something else or, you know, whatever the case is. Any job, obviously, they're going to look for experience. And so as much experience that you can get when you're still in school, the better. Um, and so what I wanted to say was from my experience with elementary and also just the people I know that have done secondary school, um, beyond elementary, the teenagers basically, um, the best thing that you can do is to try to get your master's degree or higher because nowadays most places are looking at people that are coming out with master's degrees. I have my master's degree, um, and I have a master's in teaching for early and elementary education is what I have. And, uh, but and if I were to be in the running for a job against somebody with only a bachelor's degree, I'm most likely going to get the job because I have the master's degree. The other thing is I know in my state you don't have to do as much for recertification if you have a master's degree. You still have to do some requirements. Of course, you're still going to always have ongoing professional development and that kind of thing. Um, and even in the early childhood, I have ongoing professional development. But um, you do have to do less for the teacher recertification if you have your master's degree than if you only have a bachelor's. And so uh, with choosing what it is that you want to teach, you also have to think about what your major is going to be. So I know in my state, the way that it works is for elementary, it's just a blanket um, your major is an, uh, ba a blanket major for elementary. And then um, we did a lot of like child development courses and that kind of thing. But for secondary, you actually will major in the subject that you're going to teach, whether that be history or math or foreign language or whatever the case is. Um, and then you have a secondary thing on top of that that's to do with the education piece of it. And it's almost like a double major, basically. Um, and that's how it works in my state. But I just wanted to come in and say a few tips for um, if you're looking at a teacher education program and how you can choose a, the right program for you. So to sum it up, because like I said, I didn't want to keep people here for too long, look at the requirements in the area that you live, so country, state, etc. cetera. Um, hello. And then my second advice is to say, um, think about what it is that you want to teach as far as going along with the requirements <laughs> and the requirements for what it is that you want to teach. And then the third thing is to say that if you are looking at elementary school, so kindergarten, five-year-olds or above, you really want to go for that master's degree or more. Obviously, college, you're going to want to go for like the PhD and that kind of thing. Um, but if you're just looking to do like early childhood, really, if you just have some basic background in education, you'll get hired. And some experience with kids, that kind of thing. Um, you don't have to spend all that money that it does cost to get a master's degree to be able to do um, early childhood. Although it does look good. So, <laughs> and it looks good on the school to have somebody with a master's degree hired. But um, that's beside the point. But anyway, um, and I really just wanted to share from my experience some advice for people. Um, and so the next topic that I'm going to talk about next week is going to be, I want to talk about getting the most out of your student teaching and practicum experiences before you get into the classroom. And then from there, I plan to try to do some topics on, like I said, first year teacher tips, because I know I had a really rough, actually first two years. And um, just, and then I'll probably do some like early childhood tips, that kind of thing. Um, since I'm currently in early childhood, I'll also probably do some um, elementary tips because my background is elementary education. Um, I've actually, this is my fourth school year teaching, but I feel like in the four years that I've been teaching, I've got, I've gained some good insights. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, because um, I, I started teaching fourth grade. I've been in the early childhood field with toddlers, two-year-olds specifically, 
um, two and three year olds since June of 2014. So that is a year and a half. So I can't believe that it's been four years since I graduated college, but um, it has been. And <laughs> so I just wanted to come on and do some things for fellow teachers. Um, I know there are some teachers here on Periscope and just people that might be interested and um <laughs> yeah they do the two-year-olds do have a lot of energy I'm, I'm still teaching the two-year-olds um and they do have a lot of energy and but i like it it's fun and um but yeah and then i'll probably also do some i might even do like some sunday school tips at some point because i do sunday school too and then books i know i wanted to do some book scopes like i did before i did one a while back it's on my catch about books so that's what I'm thinking with going forward for teach Thursday we'll see where it goes but I know the topic for next week because I wanted to start with bringing everything from beginning to end choosing your education program to student teaching to the first year teacher well, not beginning to end like I said but beginning from the beginning and <laughs> so the one next week is going to be talking about um, getting the most out of your student teaching and I do want to thank everybody for joining. Thank you, Shakita, for joining and for the hearts and um, the comments there. And I will see everybody next time. Bye, guys.